Hey y'all, Graham here today for a nature stroll. Thank you so much for joining me outside. It's a beautiful but gray day in central Ohio where I live. Uh, and we're just gonna explore my neighborhood. We're gonna look at some plants that are growing here, some flowers and some trees. If we get lucky, we'll hopefully see some animals, uh, maybe some cool fungi or mushrooms. Um, but really, before we get going, I want to kind of set some expectations for this time. Um, as we're exploring this neighborhood, I'm going to keep my eyes open wide the whole time. I'm going to be aware of my surroundings, um, including any cars that are coming or people walking down the sidewalk or animals um, to keep myself safe. So if I see any animals of any kind, I'm going to give them space. I'm never going to approach them. Similarly, to keep myself in the plants that are in this ecosystem that I live in safe, I'm not going to pick anything, I'm not going to touch anything unless I already know what it is and that it's not going to harm me. Um, so if I see any cool flowers, I'm just going to appreciate them and move on. I'm not going to take them with me. And the other part of keeping my eyes open wide is that I want to see as much as I can. There's tiny plants growing everywhere. There's really cool moss in my neighborhood I want to be able to make sure I catch. Um, so I'm going to try to notice the small details, stuff that I usually just glaze over and don't really look at. I'm going to try to really look at today. Um, so we're going to keep ourselves safe. We're going to keep our eyes open wide, make some cool observations, um, and ask some questions. Uh, why is that plant growing in that spot? It looks like it would be hard for it to grow there. What is that plant? Um, why do mallard ducks have green heads, some of them? I don't know. We're going to ask some questions about the stuff we see and hopefully find some answers. I am not a naturalist, I'm not a biologist, I'm just somebody who really loves being outside and really loves learning about the world that I live in um, and the ecosystems I'm a part of and, and how um, my interactions with the world have ripple effects throughout the world. So let's go explore. Right off the bat in my own front lawn, we get really lucky. There's this beautiful purple hyacinth growing here. Hyacinths are always one of the first signs of spring to me. I see them a lot in central Ohio. They're really, really fragrant and they pop out of the ground just after um, some of the last hard frosts. So they are letting me know that I can go outside and feel sun on my skin once more. Another early spring bloom that is all over my neighborhood in central Ohio. These beautiful daffodils. Now daffodils come in all shades of white and yellow. These ones are mostly like a creamy kind of white with a rich golden like a yolk kind of like an egg right in the center and they're popping up all over so keep your eyes open for these we will almost certainly see some of different colors as we go here's one that really surprised me the first time i saw it just like a block from my house one of my neighbors has some prickly pear cacti growing in their lawn and i always think about cacti as being a desert plant or growing naturally in places that are hot and don't get a lot of rain unlike central Ohio, but these cacti look like they're doing pretty good. I think that they're coming out of the winter right now, but I see some of last year's, I think, flowers, those kind of reddish, rusty, um, bloom-looking things on them. I don't know. I'll write that one down and do a little more research when I'm home. I think a lot of times nature is presented as something that is separate from us, right? Like you go to a park and you're in nature or you go on a vacation to explore the mountains and that's nature. But I feel really strongly that we are a part of nature for sure. We really are a part of the ecosystems, um, the, the systems of life and interactions between different living things that are all around us. And this feels like a really fun example, right? I'm walking down my sidewalk, my eyes are open wide. I look down and there's all these little, I don't know what they are, maybe some kind of violet or like a Johnny Jump Up, just growing out of the cracks in the sidewalk. Um, there's some rebar poking out of this big chunk of cement. And these plants are just like hanging. This looks like a hard place for them to grow. I would not want to grow here if I were a plant, but it's doing great. Another neighbor's got some really cool purple kale growing in their lawn. Kale is part of the brassica family, same as broccoli and Brussels sprouts and a bunch of other vegetables. And it's one of the really hardy greens that can withstand the winter. So I bet this stuff was kind of growing and growing last fall, maybe last summer. And then as it got colder, it probably stopped growing so much, but it's here on the other side of winter looking really leafy and really good. And similarly, just like in the same area, same neighbor's got all these tall sprouts that kind of look like chives or the top of scallions. And this is wild onion, I'm pretty sure. That's what I call it at least. So they've got like a whole salad growing right here in the front of their lawn. Tight. 
I'm standing beneath a really tall oak tree, and I'm gonna guess it's a red oak. I'll tell you why. This is the leaf that was grown off of this tree last fall, um, and this characteristic shape that's got these little arms all over it is super, super, a super good tip that this is an oak tree. The sharp edges of this one, if you can see that silhouetted against the sky, like those little points, they'll prick me and they'll draw my blood. They won't actually. But that's how I remember that this is a red oak. It makes me think of blood. Maybe that's kind of gruesome, but um, they're really cool. I also think they're red oaks because the leaves turn like this kind of rich, um, rusty red color in the fall. Another great indicator that it's an oak tree is the presence of acorns. Acorns are always around oak trees because they are the oak tree's seed. So they fall off of oak trees and if you plant that someday, potentially another oak will grow. I'm at the base of a really tall sycamore. It's all the way up there. It's one of the biggest trees in my neighborhood for sure. And I know this is a sycamore because if you look at the bark on the trunk, it's kind of flaky or peely and it's like a darker gray on top of a much lighter gray almost white color and that goes all the way up the trunk you can see it a little more up there but it's such a overcast day it's hard to see um, but sycamores are awesome they need a lot of water so you will often see them growing in close to rivers or um, yeah on the banks of some body of water they also have really cool seed pods. I'm not seeing any down here because they happen in the fall and then kind of blow away, but they're almost like a dandelion puff um, where it's just a bunch of little bits of fluff and when you blow on them they'll fly away in the wind. Sycamore seed pods are a similar design so the seeds are um, attached to these little bits of fluff so when they fall out of the tree they kind of like explode when they hit the ground and then these little bits of fluff carry the seeds on the wind to go repopulate in other places couple of cool little mallard ducks waddling along in a Canada goose. So I'm really fortunate to live close to a park that has a lot of really, really awesome wildlife in it. Have a nice swim, y'all. This robin was working on pulling a worm out of the ground, but I think I startled it. Robins are really cool. Their bellies are kind of bright, rusty red as the their heads are black and their backs and wings are mostly gray. And you see them all over right now. Um, and sometimes they're kind of lumpy because they're full of eggs. Another super iconic tree, the sweet gum. They drop these little spike balls that look kind of like a medieval weapon of some kind to me. And they just get everywhere. The trees themselves, the bark and the leaves, I don't really know much about. I'm not really sure how to tell you what a sweet gum is any kind of way except looking at the spike balls. And a lot of people call sweet gums different things. That's just the name that I know for them. Whenever I'm out exploring, I try to take a couple minutes to just send out some gratitude and appreciation into the universe. So big thanks for this day, for the beautiful cloudy skies for my body for getting me around. Uh, big thanks to the plants that I saw, the really cool animals, the robin and the mallards and the geese. And big thanks to you for tuning in and for having a curious brain and wanting to, to, to see some stuff in the world. There's a lot of great free resources through the internet and books that can help identify trees and plants and animals. So I'll do some research into those too and get a list for next time about ways we can find some of these answers. Thanks so much for tuning in. It was really fun exploring the neighborhood. I will catch you all next time. Be good.